The Icy Tundra by Anna Atkins The tundra is located at the top of the world below the polar deserts in Alaska, Canada, and parts of Asia. The tundra is a cold place filled with frozen water and little nature life. The tundra got its name from the Finnish word tundrita, which means treeless land. The weather on the tundra is really different from Virginia's weather. In the winter, the nights start to grow longer and longer until there is only one day that there are 24 hours of night and no daylight. The tundra is really cold, and that is because there is a layer of frozen ground about 10 inches under the top soil. That layer is called permafrost. The layer above the permafrost is frozen in the winter, but it thaws in the spring, which is called the growing season. It is only about two months. In the summer, the days start to grow longer and the nights grow shorter until there is one day of 24 hours of daylight. During the growing season, the tundra becomes marsh-like. The permafrost keeps the water above the ground so that lakes and ponds start popping up all over the place. That way, the plants can grow. In the winter, the tundra is dry and windy and freezing cold. The tundra is the world's youngest biome. It is 10,000 years old. Even if the tundra is really cold, there are still some animals and plants that are adapted to live in this environment. The polar bear is perfectly adapted to the tundra. The coat of a polar bear has about 10 inches of blubber under their fur. Polar bears are the largest carnivore on land. Since the ice cap is melting, the polar bear's hunting season is growing short. The most common death of young polar bears is starvation. The polar bears are listed as an endangered species. Before now, people would hunt the polar bears for their thick coats. There used to be 5,000 polar bears. Now, there are 40,000. All countries that have polar bears in it restrict hunting and have conservation projects. The Arctic hare has fur like a polar bear, but it is a much smaller version. The Arctic hare will change its fur color from white with black on the tip of the ears to a brown, black colored fur. In the winter storms, the arctic hare will tuck in its ears and tail and sit in the freezing wind for hours. That is how the hare stays warm. The hare has unusually long nails that will dig into the frozen soil so that it can get food in the winter. The hare usually lives in places where the grass will grow fast in the spring. The arctic wolf is an incredible animal because it has survived for so long. Other wolves are on the endangered list, but the arctic wolf has kept the same number of population as it had had before. But the arctic wolf population has never been much because of the harsh conditions that it lives in. Hunters don't like the arctic tundra, so the wolves aren't hunted much. The wolves will kill anything that comes across it and will eat all of it. Meat, skin, and bones. The caribou are food for the wolves because they are the biggest animal around, so they are part of the wolf's main diet. The caribou has special stomach acid so that they can digest lichen. Lichen will grow anywhere, so in the winter, when the food is scarce, the lichen can be a main source of food. The caribou were brought to Alaska in 1887 because scientists thought that since the caribou did so well on the tundra in Asia, they would do well in Alaska, and they were right. There are now 5 million caribou in the world. Caribou are like deer, but all of the caribou have antlers, the male and the female. But the female's antlers are shorter, more slender, and much more simpler. Lemmings are like mice, but are adapted to live in cold temperatures. Lemmings are known for their explosions of population every three or four years. When the populations grow, the lemmings go into the wild. Then they die from being eaten by predators and trying to cross a river or a stream. Then the population goes back to normal. Because of the climate and being almost at the top of the world, a great phenomenon is when the northern lights appear. They are extremely beautiful and only show up in the sky above the tundra. The animals are not the only living things that can live on the Arctic. There are plants that live up there too. The bearberry got its name because bears commonly eat it. The bearberry is a very useful plant. All parts of it can be used in some way. 
The fruit can be eaten and cooked with other foods. The root can be made into a tea that can treat a constant cough. A tea made from the leaves can be drunk to treat kidney or bladder problems. The bush grows everywhere in the tundra. That way people can access it and the animals can eat its fruit. Caribou moss is called a moss, but it is really a lichen. It looks like a foamy gray-green spongy mass, and it grows to be one to four inches high. Plus, it is rich in vitamin A and B. Lichen can survive for long periods of time without water. They just dry out and go dormant when there is little water or light. They can begin to grow again even after very long periods of dormancy, which is perfect for living in the Arctic. The demi leaf willow grows only a few inches tall, so it can easily resist the winds that come blowing across the tundra. It has ten times more vitamin C than oranges, and it is also a good source of vitamin A and D. It can be made into a basket because the branches bend easily. It provides food for musk oxen, caribou, and reindeer. There is another location of the tundra, but it isn't in the Arctic. It is called the Alpine Tundra. The Alpine Tundra biome exists on rocky mountaintops and is very similar to the Arctic Tundra because trees cannot grow at this high altitude. Most of the Alpine Tundra plant life consists of shrubbery and small leafy plants such as alpine bluegrass, which serve as dinner to a variety of grazing animals such as acorn sheep and mountain goats. I think the tundra is a really cool biome, and people should learn more about it.